Before this video gets started, I did notice while I was editing and kind of reading some other things that the icon I have for Copilot on my taskbar looks different than the one that I'm seeing from other people. I don't know exactly why that is. I am a beta Windows Insider. This is what it installed. I don't know if I have something that's different from other people. I, from what I understand, the functionality should be exactly the same. I don't know of anything that's different. Again, I've done some reading. It seems like what I'm experiencing is the same experience. But yes, the icon, for some reason, does look a little bit different. Again, I checked for an update. This is what it downloaded. So this is what I'm talking about. If any of this ends up being inaccurate from what other people downloaded, I don't know what to make of that again. So this is just my experience. So there's a new update out for Windows 11, and this is, I guess, technically not 23H2, although it is bringing Copilot and some other features to Windows 11 in this video. We're gonna look at this most recent blog post, and I'm gonna kind of give you my thoughts on how this new update functions. I obviously have it on my computer. I have Copilot and so forth on here. So we're gonna take a look at some of these things in real time and talk about if I think that they're actually worth any hype. The first thing we're looking at is Copilot and it is this thing that will slide out on the right side of your screen and you can do several different things with it. As you see here, you can summarize a page, compose an email, and then change some settings on your computer. Now, at first, this sounded fairly interesting to me. However, the more that I'm messing around with it, the less interesting I feel like it might be. So let's take a look at it here. We're just on my desktop and you can see the co-pilot icon. We're going to click on that. I'm actually in my settings, so that's not what that's normally going to look like. It's going to look like that. Okay, so what can you do from here? Well, they mentioned several different things. The first of which is summarizing a web page. So Let's try that. And you may actually notice something about what I'm about to do. And you may know why this is probably not going to work. Summarize this page. Boom. Okay, let's hit enter. And what's going to happen here is it's not going to work. And that's because we are in Google Chrome. We are not in Microsoft's Edge browser. I've not paid super close attention to this stuff, but I was kind of under the assumption that something like this going to summarize what's on your screen would just be looking at what's on your screen, kind of like what Google has done with some of their Google Assistant stuff, where you can actually have it use the screen as the context for what's going on. This is stuff that they're still rolling out and still working on, but it's something that's there. That is not what's happening here. In fact, not only is it not working, it's actually working in a really weird way. It's trying to summarize itself, it appears. It's trying to tell me what Copilot is instead of summarizing the web page that I am on. Okay, we can you can stop. That's fine. You've done you've done more than enough. So at least right now, you would need to open up this web page in Edge. And we'll go ahead and let that run again to get this to work correctly, but that is a little redundant to me because Edge already has the Bing chat bar in it already. It is continuing to just to just summarize itself. Let's start fresh. All right, we're going to start fresh. We're going to we're going to close it out. We're going to bring it back up again. We're going to try it again because I swear this is supposed to work. Now it says search in your active Microsoft Edge tab. So this might actually there we go. This is actually working. But again, what I was going to say is we already have this built into Edge. So why do I need this if this is here and this only works in Microsoft Edge? The other way that you could use it would be like this. You could copy that URL and then send it. And then you could say, uh, explain it. And it should do the same sort of thing at that point. So like an additional step there. Of course, you could also just directly copy some text, send it into Copilot and have it summarize it or do any manner of things directly from that. And there's other things you could do with this sort of text as well, like solving equations even is a possibility. Having it create a table based on some text, some data that is there on the screen. So there's several things you can do, but you're gonna have to manually copy that information 
and put it into Copilot. It's not going to be able to universally just look at this screen and do that for you. And I've got to be honest, some of that stuff is actually really impressive. It's something you're going to have to get into the flow of using, remembering that that Copilot is there. And then you also have to consider how often do you need those tasks to be done? It's one of these things that when I see the demos, I'm like, that is really, really cool. But then when I have it here, I don't know how often <laughs> I'm going to do any of those things. I guess that remains to be seen as more time goes on. It is very impressive. It is a little bit more manual than I would like it to be. And it may be something that I forget exists. Maybe you're different. Now, as for the other stuff, composing an email to your daughter's new teacher, changing settings, things like that. I mean, I'll, I guess that stuff's fine. Like we can do snap a window. Would you, that took a really long time just to do that. Like, why would you want to do that? Why dark mode, these sorts of things? Like, why would you want to do it that way? It's going to take 15 times longer than just dragging the wind. I don't know why you would want to do it this way, but I guess you can. And I feel like that's going to be true of like all of these settings. Like, isn't Bluetooth like right there? Isn't that always going to be faster? I, I don't know, but I really understand like what the purpose of this is in its current state. Now, the next thing here is with Microsoft Paint, which I must admit is something I've not used very much, but it can now do some pretty interesting stuff. Let's open up Paint, and the first thing you're going to see is that right up here is where co-create should be, and that is the ability to basically have it generate different things like you can with the co-pilot. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to quickly generate an image. We're going to pretend like it's happening here, but it's actually going to be happening here because that's not rolled out yet. Okay, so we have a couple of images here, and I actually, I need this to have a background. So let's do change the background because I'm going to try to remove the background. This is one of the coolest things about Paint that they have added, the ability to quickly pop out a background. I actually use a website called remove.bg to do this all the time for my thumbnails. And I might actually just start using Paint to do this because it works really well. Okay, so here's one here. We're going to click on it. And we're going to right click and copy it. We're going to bring it back into Paint. We're going to paste it in. And what we're going to do rather strangely, we're going to try to remove the background. This is a pretty spicy background, so it's going to struggle with this a little bit. You can see it did not a super great job. But again, that was a pretty wild background that it came up with. We're actually going to, let's pivot here. We'll go to my own Google Photos account. We'll copy this image. We're going to delete this layer. We're going to paste that in. How about that? Let's try to remove that background. And boom, that worked really, really well. And it was very, very quick on top of that. And of course, you do now have layers to work with as well. Of course, once that image generation is right there in paint, that might work you know, a little bit more seamlessly. But for now, you can kind of simulate it by doing that in terms of clip champ. There's some other stuff there. I must admit, I don't really ever use ClipChamp. It is their cloud-based video editing software. Basically, as you can see here, you can answer a couple of questions on the type of video you are making. ClipChamp will provide recommended scenes, edits, and a narrative for you based on that input. That might be useful to you. Here is a really cool one, though, that I am going to be using. Let's use the snipping tool. And I just took a snip of what was on the screen. And I'm going to drag that over. We can make it a little bit bigger. And what you see right here is a text action button. And now all of that text is able to be copied and pasted. That is absolutely fantastic. And we'll do another one here. We can also quickly redact email addresses and phone numbers, which it's not going to pick up anything here. But if it did, it would quickly get rid of that text. This is really, really cool. If we take another snip here, you'll see that it actually pops up in the co-creator as well because it's part of my clipboard. So let's add that. And I should have some abilities to do something with it. It normally actually popped up and asked me, gave me some, like, some suggestions about like what I might want to do with this. I tried asking it what it could do, and it's been stuck here for a couple of minutes, so maybe there's things you can do with this. Maybe not. 
This appears to be one of those instances of something that just hasn't fully rolled out yet because we've seen them show snipping something and it popping up and asking you if you want to remove the background, blur the background, do these things like this. So perhaps this just hasn't arrived yet. The next one is inside their Photos app. You can kind of do the Google Photos thing where you can type in a search term. It will use AI to find images that match that term. That is pretty interesting. Inside the editing, you can actually apply blur, which from this picture does not look good because this should not be blurred. We'll test this really quickly. All right, so here's a picture I just took. Let's open it up. Background blur tab is in focus and you are at the crop screen currently. So I'm gonna click on that and it's gonna try. Okay, so there it picked, it picked the, the background correctly and it is blurring that for me. Let's crank up the blur. That's actually not too bad. That's, I've seen worse. So that might be something that is, you know, somewhat useful to you. We have some changes to Windows backup, as you can see here, to make that process just a little bit simpler and easier, something I should probably take advantage of. Accessible by default voice access expansion. I won't spend too much time here, but expanding the ability of these accessibility features like voice access is definitely big for some people. And there are several other things in this blog post I'm just not gonna cover because they're just not relevant to me. They're things I'm not going to be able to test, like accessibility options and last pass integrations. I'm just going to drop the link to the blog post down below. You can check those out. But in terms of the other things that are in this release, things I was excited about, Copilot is just not really doing a whole lot for me right now because right now it's basically just what we had in the Edge browser placed on your desktop. It just slides out, but it's the exact same functionality, which some of it is fairly cool, but I don't find myself really using it. Now, of course, we've seen other demos of it being integrated into other Microsoft applications, 365 and things like that, using it to generate tables and headers. And there's lots of potentially really exciting stuff that's going to come down the line. But for this update, we kind of just have a skeleton that's rolled out of what Copilot is going to maybe be built upon as time goes by. And for right now, that's all I can really talk about. That's all we really have in front of us. The paint stuff seems cool. The image creation stuff is pretty decent. It's still pretty slow, but whatever. It's generating an image, so it's going to be slow. Blur in the photos, searching through photos. That stuff is solid as well, but I suspect a lot of people probably already have an app where they back up their photos that can do something similar. So I'm not sure how big of a win that's going to be either. I know I use Google Photos. I think iCloud can do, or, you know, your your iPhone Photos app. I think they can do similar things as well. So all in all, this is a pretty mixed bag for me, to be honest, guys. Not super duper impressed. There are some good things there, but we're gonna need more stuff when 23H2 actually hits because this is not that. We need more of these features and we need it to really do something more impressive because right now I feel like they had some momentum with being chat, you know, a few months back. And it feels like that momentum is pretty much dead at this point. I don't see anybody talking about it. And the stuff that they're doing with Copilot I just don't feel a lot of excitement whenever I'm using it. Maybe I'm crazy. You can talk about it in the comments down below, guys. Those are my thoughts. I'll see you on the next one. Until next time, stay nerdy. Bye.